Virgo, March begins with the new moon in Pisces, which is opposite your sign, of course. Pisces is opposite Virgo. And so there's a lot of reflection time for you during this cycle, during this month. And the new moon, March 1st, is very intense, not because of the position of the sun and the moon itself, as that is trying Jupiter, but the energies of the weekend, we are on the day of the new moon, Mars in Libra goes retrograde. On the second, Saturn turns retrograde, and Mars and Venus are square. So there is an intensity between this Saturn energy, which is this depth of what are you going to do about things, making things real, being serious. It's in your solar third house of communication, so you could start to rethink how you want to communicate. If you're a writer, you could go back to doing some writing or learning new things that help day-to-day -day functioning like computer programs and all that mechanical stuff that changes so quickly in the world. The Mars-Venus square. Now, Venus is what we love, what we want, what we desire. Mars is our will to do it. And for you, Venus is in the what's called the solar fifth house of hobbies what you love to do love affairs joy and mars in your solar second house of money it, do you have the money to do the things you love to do or, it, or do you have the will to spend the money to do the things you say you want to do that is a large question that will continue until we get to the full moon now on the 5th of march Venus goes into Aquarius. And that is an air sign. It lightens things up. And Aquarian energy is quincunx, your Virgo energy, which is 150 degrees away, which is an adjustment. So you could be making some adjustments to the things that you love, especially in terms of your habits and your routines. In order for me to have the thing that I want, what change do I need to make in my routine that will help me. Jupiter goes direct on the 6th in Cancer. It's when uh, any planet goes retrograde or direct, it has this laser focused of its vibration down to the planet. And it's in a placement of connecting with friends, connecting with groups, connecting with organizations, and have an opportunity there. The full moon on the 16th is your full moon, the moon in Virgo. And you'll feel it the whole weekend, Friday the 14th, Saturday the 15th, all the way up until that Sunday when it's full. And that full is balancing between what you need to do for yourself and having others in your life and, and even what others expect from you. So having a good balance. And also, how much do you want to give? How much is your life of service, of compassion, of caring? The sun enters Aries on the 20th, about 1 p.m. Eastern Time, bringing this fire energy. And fire is inspiration, bringing the sense of inspiration into life. So you could start to feel a little bit more inspired. But also, it is, again, it's in this quincunx position. Aries to Virgo is just like Aquarius to Virgo's quincunx, adjusting. What's the adjustment? This is an area of life that represents money you owe others, taxes, credit cards, loans, and even other people, and also joint resources. It's the house that represents the money from your partner if you're in a partnership, whether it's a marriage partner or a roommate partner, who's going to, how are we going to split the cable bill? So it's making, there could be some adjustments in those arrangements. The month ends with a new moon just like it began, and it's intense, but for a different reason. The new moon is at, if you look at it, 9 degrees 59, basically 10 degrees of Aries, conjunct Uranus and wants freedom. I want change. I want something different. I want to, it's a very impatient. It's a very impatient energy. I'm just ready. It certainly will be, I'm, I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for fresh air. I'm ready to go out and if you're in the northern climates, of the equator can be already really ready for good weather. And it's square Pluto and square Jupiter. Now Pluto is that which is outside of our control and transformation. 
So you could be ready for something, but there could be a situation outside of your control that, you know, you just got to deal with it. And where's the transformation? Within yourself, of course. But where's the opportunity? Because Jupiter wants expansion and growth. And it says, get out and connect with other people. Join a group, join an organization, find somebody that likes to do some, a, a group of people that like to do what you like to do, and have that connection that way. And that can get you inspired. That can really sense us inspired. Now, just as the month began with a Venus-Mars aspect, but square, it ends with a Venus-Mars trine, which is more harmonious. However, Venus is square Saturn which feels restrictive, restrictive in money, restrictive in things you want. And square Sedna, that dream of the promised land, the promises, if I do this and I'll have that, that do, didn't come true. And But it's also, it's about bringing up awareness and being willing to do what it takes. Saturn is work hard, be willing to do what it takes, learn your lessons, learn from it and move on. And Take a look at your deep belief systems about, is it really true if you do this, then you'll get that? And make the adjustments needed, ultimately, to have the sense of openness and freedom and expansion and transformation that is promised with this new moon in Aries. 